OpenAI, an AI company, recently announced ChatGPT, a dialogue-based AI chatbot which is capable of understanding and responding in natural language. ChatGPT has taken the internet by storm and its usage crossed a million just within a few days of the introduction of its most recent prototype. Most users appear to be rather astonished at its simple human interface and of course its ability to provide rather good answers to seemingly complex problems. Perhaps because of this, the New York Times recently reported that companies like Google recently issued a red alert fearing that new age chatbots like ChatGPT can replace traditional search engines, which of course would be a problem for companies like Google. So what is ChatGPT? Like with most human interactions, perhaps we could ask ChatGPT itself. Simply put, ChatGPT uses deep learning to produce human-like text. Underlying it is a large language model which uses a variety of statistical techniques that determine the probability of a given sequence of words occurring in a sentence. ChatGPT uses a generative pre-trained Transformer 3 engine or just GPT-3 language model which is a state-of-the-art language processing AI model developed by OpenAI. These models are trained on more than 45 terabytes of text data and incorporates about 175 billion parameters or variables that the model uses to make predictions and use advanced machine learning algorithms to learn the patterns and structures of natural language. Whereas the platform always impressed its users with its ability to perform complex tasks, the latest chatbot style implementation appears to have expanded its appeal. Even three years back, GPT-3 was able to write an op-ed for The Guardian and was always perceived to showcase significant capabilities. Given the tremendous capabilities of the platform, the fear, of course, for professors like myself who are in the profession of writing research articles is that soon our jobs might be replaced by these chatbots. Just today, I noticed a post on LinkedIn, a research article that was co-authored by ChatGPT. Let's see if ChatGPT is likely to represent or replace the tasks of professors. Driven by my curiosity to get to the bottom of this possibility, I recently quote-unquote benchmarked ChatGPT with human beings in a variety of ways. I fed a list of course descriptions offered by ISB in Term 7 and asked ChatGPT to classify them thematically. And here is what I got. And from my understanding of what these courses stand for, it seems to be pretty much in the ballpark. I also fed it a bunch of articles and asked ChatGPT to interpret its sentiment. And this is what you would see. My reading suggests that ChatGPT's assessment of the sentiments is more or less true. Given that ChatGPT was trained to predict patterns, I wonder if the answers to non-standard questions might be a bit more imprecise. Once again, let's see how ChatGPT compares with humans. And given that I am a strategy professor, I asked ChatGPT some basic questions that I typically ask of my students in a strategy course. What determines the vertical boundaries of a firm? So actually the resources of the company decides whether the company can vertically integrate or not. And the other factor is the transactional cost of doing it internally versus outsourcing it to the other parties can benefit the company. And the third one is the internal economies of scale of doing vertical integration is beneficial or not. So these three factors decides the uh, vertical boundaries of a company. 
why should organizations be ambidextrous? Every organization have to have two different challenges. So what I would answer is, uh, in, I'm, an, I'm from an automotive professional. What I understand is that one is currently what is going on in order to make your business running and you need to make it profitable to earn money and also to flow back into various other complexities which are coming forward. So unless otherwise an organization really look out for an ambidextrous, keep working on a basics so that they are run up and run the business and also keep the other hand or other part of a brain to keep working on what is going to come up in the future. And unless you raise these two things are, do not go parallel, hand in hand, probably organization can never survive uh, the, the long run at all. That's why I believe ambient access is most important thing. What are Porter's generic strategies and why are they useful? So Porter's generic strategy helps us, helps a firm to really under, uh, analyze their competitive position uh, in the industry and in the market uh, that uh, they are operating in or they want to operate in. And it also helps the firm to think beyond the current strategy that they may need to look at. Why do firms exist? Uh, firms exist uh, to uh, uh, execute an idea or uh, create a product uh, which will give a value uh, to the customers or the stakeholders or the personals who is going to consume and uh, cater the niche market or a already existing market. Are ideas non-rivalrous? It, it, if it is patented and it is taken for a, a specific period of time, it is freezed for a specific period of time, uh, it can be non-rivalrous. Overall, I think chat GPT does just as well as human beings. How about asking it questions that require a little bit of more logical reasoning. These may even be somewhat more obscure than my earlier questions. How does the resource-based view of the firm link with Porter's generic strategy framework? Okay. So Porter's five uh, forces uh, where we are talking about the competitiveness, which is the rivalry, or entry barriers, suppliers, buyers, as well as the substitute, of course, will give the firm to assess what is required, what are those forces that are going to kind of impact their positioning in the market. But then this positioning cannot be, or the strategy, whatever the company is going to come up with, or a firm is going to come up with, will not be successful without them analyzing the capability or the resources that they have to be successful. So and hence, um, the portal strategy combined with the resource-based view will be an extremely important step for the firms to devise a successful strategy. Why should firms innovate when innovation is risky? So when you want to really survive and you, you want the business to keep running for future generations to come, Innovation is the only way you can actually move it forward. Why are a portfolio of innovations useful for a firm rather than just having a few innovations? So today in the industry, uh, the disruptions can come from come in many forms. Um, the disruptions have become eminent, right? So the traditionalists no longer exist. You know, recently the Fortune 500. Um, companies that uh, we are looking at may no longer become Fortune 500. There are disruptors who are also becoming enablers for the traditionalist. In that sense, it is imperative for every company to look at diverse set of innovation. And when I say diverse, it is about including the ecosystem, uh, which actually plays a larger play in the new world. Perhaps. ChatGPT does not do as well, but it does not seem that far behind human beings. Let's focus on a different set of questions. How does it do with logical questions that might sometimes involve solving a problem? And here is a question that some of my students solve in a matter of seconds in some of my classes. Suppose I had a firm of which I am the only owner. If I stay on, let's say I get a million. And if I exit, I get 50,000. 
that I can invest in another startup which has a 50% chance of success. If the startup is successful, it can potentially yield 100 times my investment. What should I do? Should I stay on or should I exit? Here is one answer to this question. The answer is to compare the expected payoff if I exit with the same if I stayed on. So one would compare a million with 50% multiplied by 50,000 multiplied by 100 and of course 50% multiplied by 0 which gives you about 2.5 million. This suggests that I should actually exit right now. Let's see what chat GPT suggests. Ooh, the answer seems woefully inadequate. In sum, ChatGPT is a great start in terms of AI helping us with tasks that are non-routine and something that involves cognition as well. This attempt is also a very good signal of AI's ability to help us with non-routine tasks that involve cognition and reasoning, something that no other previous technological advances have even remotely come close to. All the previous technological advances have only taken a stab at automating routine and perhaps non-cognitive tasks. But that said, there is indeed, as we have discovered, a long way to go before machines can become truly intelligent. And also, given the core algorithms underlying large language models that power technologies such as ChatGPT are based on predicting future words in sentences based on past data to enable the generation of sentences similar to how human beings talk and maybe write, it is plausible that such technologies can strongly reinforce and sometimes even exasperate issues such as, for example, racism, sexism, and other forms of injustices that have plagued us in the past. While it will surely be interesting to see how the civil society might deal with this problem, users should nonetheless be aware of this possibility before mass-scale deployment.